been in a proper prison. If anything kicks off and it goes a little bit pear-shaped, then it's not going to be a, a friendly place to be in the middle of. Britain's prison population is exploding. It's increased by 22,000 in the last decade and cost almost two billion a year. It just seems a complete waste. The amount of money that we spend to keep these guys in there, this is costing us a fortune. There are some prison work schemes. The government say they want to create more, but in cash-trapped Britain, few offenders graft full-time to pay anything back. The whole purpose of this is to get in there, set up a business, and to get them grafted. So I'm giving my time and energy to see if I can get offenders earning. Hello, good afternoon. Hi, it's Gordon Ramsay. It's taken nine months to persuade the Ministry of Justice to let me try and set up my pilot business in the notorious HMP Brixton. Jesus, the size of that wall. The governor's put the word out about my idea, and a few of the prisoners are curious about my plan to cook on the inside and sell on the outside. I do. Mobile phone, yeah. Brixton is a Victorian Category B prison with 800 inmates, locked up for anything from shoplifting to murder. Ramsey. Morning. How are you doing? How are you? Mark Whisker. Welcome Mark. to Brixton. Thank you. Um, okay. Um, you've handed all your personal items into the gate there. Uh, yeah, phone and your phone uh, and everything like yeah, that. Passport. I remind you to do that every day that you come. Certainly. Of okay. Course. Let's go inside. Passport. Officer Mark Wesker is taking me into the heart of the prison. Here, the prisoners are kept in their cells up to 21 hours a day. If he tries to mug me off, I'll put him right in his place. I'm not about that. No problem. I'm not here to be made fun of by him or anyone else. A lot of these people believe that they're going to do this and their lives are going to dramatically change. Hey, hey. What do I think about Ramsey? He can be a bit fierce with people that he's working with. Yeah, that's what I think. <laughs> I think he would lose a few people along the way. That's how it goes, you know, only the strong survive. Hey, what's going on? Hey, what's going on, Mr. The prisoners are housed in five separate wings. I have no idea who I'm going to be working with. If he's come here to change the world, I don't think he will. And I don't think long term it's going to, it's going to be a winner. And how many uh, prisoners are in here? Uh, I believe it's 220. Wow. Ninety percent of the criminals on this wing have serious drug or alcohol problems. Oh, they'll go hey. to the kitchen and sort it out, yeah? Uh, it's it's fucking bullshit down there, mate. You look just like you look on TV. <laughs> and you look better with the other tooth thin. Thank you. Have you got one in the middle coming? We... No, no, that's just my gap. That's, that, yeah, that's my selling point. That's what I'm good at. Can you cook? Of course I can cook. What was the last thing you cooked? Last thing I cooked. Last thing I cooked, last thing I cooked was paella. Paella? Yeah, paella. I could cook paella. I could cook, um Ming lasagna. Ming lasagna. Miss <laughs> Abram, how are you, sir? No, mate. He's working with Jamie Oliver. <laughs> <laughs> Toes unlock. It's lunchtime. The prisoners are let out of their cell for a few brief moments to collect their food. It's a chance for me to go face to face with some of my potential workers. Um, obviously you signed up. Yeah. yeah. Um, can you cook? Yeah. Have you got a party going on with all that bread? <laughs> Mr. K, uh, so you signed up? Yeah. I'm... Are you keen to learn? Yeah. Good. Can you cook? No, I can't cook. I'll try it. I'll have a go. Can you find an egg? No, yeah, of course you can. Can you poach an egg? Basic. Yeah, not really. Can you scramble an egg? Yeah. Good. I'll have a go. Mr Jones. 
Yeah. When was the last time you cooked? Tonight. Um, well, seven months ago now. What was it? Uh, spaghetti bolognese. Spaghetti bolognese. Did it go down well? Oh, yeah, we're not Good right man. Now. It's easy to forget. Some of these prisoners are here for serious offences. How long are you in for? About four years. Four years. For doing what? Oh, well, they found a shotgun under my bed. They found a shotgun under your bed. Some of these people are quite dangerous. You may get people screaming and shouting at you because you're, you know, you're famous. So they might, they might want to have a pop. Please don't rise to it. No, no, no. We'll, no we'll, we'll deal with it. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's, that's yeah, definitely. We're, we're good. At it. No. The mood has suddenly turned, and an offender is kicking off. All I can hear is my name. It's amazing how quick it kicks off like that, all of a sudden, bang, in a heartbeat. One minute is silent, next minute, it's like a potential riot. These are men under pressure. And when men are under pressure, they can do. Silly bad things. things. What kind of things can happen to him? What were they? An argument, a fight, uh, throwing something? Could be anything. Anything. Could be anything. Tough job, Tony. The enormity of what I've taken on is starting to sink in. In 2010, there were over 14,000 assaults in prison and nearly 3,000 attacks on staff. Recently, someone got their throat slit. Just a guy jumped in behind, toothbrush, melted in and slit. Um, that's the kind of things that go on. You can feel it, there's like a sort of, it's a huge weight of pressure in here, almost like it's bursting. It's so intense. Didn't seem it at first. For every hour I'm here, it's just getting stronger and stronger and stronger. I'm in Brixton prison, where I'm trying to put the prisoners to work. They're going to cook on the inside to sell on the outside. It's time they paid something back. A posse of these bad boys are curious about my plan and have agreed to meet me in the chapel to hear more. There's 22 in all, from robbers and drug dealers to burglars and thieves. They're here for a reason, and so you can get complacent about these guys and, you know, and forget what they're actually here for and what they're capable of. They will lie to him, they will try and manipulate him because that's what they do. I, I've got to get these guys on my side. I've got to go install a little bit of um, confidence. I have to do a bit of Gordon Ramsay's bug, that's why I'm coming. Can't wait. See what it's all about. What do you mean for a bit of grub? Decent bit of food. Starve. Hungry, very hungry. I'm not here to improve their grub, and this isn't going to be a fancy food treat for them. They aren't the most flexible of people in the way they think. Not with just seeing how a kitchen works and how disciplined it is. To get prisoners to do that, I find it very hard. The whole idea is getting up close and a chance to see what they're made of. Morning, guys. Morning. How are we? Sorry. Why am I here? To build a kitchen and to get a production going and give you guys a chance to earn and learn and put back inside. Is our graft in it? Is proper graft in it? Yeah, it is proper graft. Listen, let's be honest. You get out of it, we put into it. What made you want to get involved with this? It's a good question, really. Um, 20 years ago, I got dealt a dysfunctional card. My little brother became a heroin addict and my father became an alcoholic. What do I do? Do I sit there and join my little brother? Or do I become an alcoholic alongside my father? No. I got off my ass. I stopped for feeling sorry for myself. And I got on with it. Put my head down, learned a craft. And that's the journey, I'm hoping, that we're going to go on. Thank you. I think he played it well because he's, he's, he's told us a bit about his, himself, his history, how he, how he became a cook. And, you know, he's told us about his family. 
I have less than six months to kick this motley crew into shape and try and mould them into a kitchen outfit that can pay its way. Have a seat, fellas. Just chill out for a moment, OK? But can any of them even cook a simple dish of scrambled eggs? Can I spot any talent here? Anthony, hi. Little task. Little plate of scrambled eggs, please. A burglar, Anthony Kelly, age 33, is a career criminal, having spent half his life in and out of prison. What job did you have before you got in Brixton? Do you know what, Gould? I've never worked, mate. I'm ashamed of it to say it, really. I've always ducked and dived and got to no good, mate. I'm, I'm embarrassed about being in prison. I'm not proud of what I've done. I'm ashamed about what I've done. So, just ducked and dived all my life. Sniffing cocaine, 10 years of age. I could give. But um, that was that. I was in lockups, in and out of lockups all my life. <laughs> when was the last time you made a comedy? Um, at home, with my old woman. Nice. Um, yeah. Hello, you, you're getting romantic now. Yeah. Did it go down well? Here's a colour, mate. Just get around with you. Behave yourself. How long have you been a cook, Gold? Uh, 45 now. Last month. Um, so, yeah, 25 years. Better than football? No. You're kidding me, aren't you? Yeah. Football's you 90 minutes. You still play football, though, didn't you? Football's 90 minutes. Yeah. Cooking's 125 hours it's a week. Graph, isn't it? <laughs> right, little taste. It. Disgusting, isn't it? If it was an omelette, it'd be alright. It'd be alright. Next up, 45 year old Londoner Lawrence Gibbons. Is that a spelling mistake on there? Nine convictions or 79? No, I've got uh, 69 convictions. No, six, 69 or. Yeah, 69. No, 76 convictions now. You know, what some people call crime, we call the way of life. My first, my first thing was uh, robbing post offices. This time, it's assault that I'm in for. Whereas before, I've been done for drugs. The fascinating thing about you, we could have been at school together. I was 45 last month. How come you look older than me? I don't know, it must be all the money you've got, you know what I mean? <laughs> Please. Have a little taste. A bit too watery, a bit overcooked. It's becoming apparent that I'm starting at rock bottom here. We've got a leak in the ceiling. What's all that water for? I don't know. Is it burnt? It's a little bit burnt, but... A little bit burnt? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> this lot can't tell their arse from their elbow. Tesla Jones from South London has been in trouble with the law since he was 12. And first time in? Um, no, no. I've, I've been in several times before. I've been in several times, yeah. Right. I actually, like, grew up in prison. You understand? I spent most of my, my teenage years in prison. The opportunity that I've got now, I mean, maybe I'm the next Gordon Ramsay. Maybe I'm the black Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> you never know. Mm. That water coming out the side, what do you think that means? Um, what does that mean? It won't cook long enough. No, it's overcooked. It's overcooked Other way, yeah. yeah. I think Tesla's willing to work hard, but he's a disaster in the kitchen. I didn't anticipate they would all be quite so useless. None of these reprobates has a clue how to cook. Long day. Uh, that's a tough one. Quite a few decisions to make now. They're all shit. Ready? He has got another job, man. And you know what? I fucking don't know how he's going to do it. He's got to be himself, I think. Don't try and be over fucking old. Fuck this, fuck that F word shit. Fuck all that. I mean, they grip your hands, they shake hands with you, and they let you know. Don't fuck with me. You know, a sort of chilling feeling because you're just. This is five minutes from my house. I'm feeling like I'm the vulnerable one now, walking around with a target on my back. Ultimately, my bad boys will be cooking on the inside to sell on the outside. It's not going to be easy. And first, I've got to convince the prison governor, Ed Tullett, and his team about my plan for a working business kitchen. <sighs> Morning, everybody. Morning. This is the beginning of an ongoing project. The objective is to stand alone kitchen that can be a proper business within the prison. Kitchens can function from £1,000 a week to, you know, 
£50,000 a week in turnover. The dream would be for it to make money, generate income and put back in. We are, we are a pretty cynical bunch. You know, we've seen projects come and go over the years and what we're really interested in is something which is sustainable and going to last. That's the bit going forward that slightly worries me because kind of getting a business out of this, keeping the kitchen going, working it around our regime, it's going to be a massive task for Brixton. I know it's a big ask. Uh, and, uh, yeah, uh, my, 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 my balls are on the line. Being in a prison is not the same as being or working on the outside. The offenders, you know, you can't underestimate that they are not always an easy bunch to work with. They're not used to working on a nine-to-five basis. They're not necessarily used to, um, to coming to work and being told what to do and then taking it the right way. It is a very new thing for them and they have to get used to it. In six months' time, I want to leave this prison with a, a proper working commercial kitchen. So, right now, I've got 22 incompetent prisoners, and that's just way too much for me to handle. I'm going to scale it down, get a dynamic 12 for my bad boy brigade. None of this lot can cook, but are they any good at anything? I've devised a test to see if any of them can learn to cook or sell what we cook to make money. If they can't do either, they're out. Morning. Morning. How are we? We're going to make some fairy cakes. <laughs> what are you laughing at? I love a fairy cake. You like fairy cakes. What's the secret of a good fairy cake? I have a fucking clue, but I like it. Now, I want to see your imagination go wild. I want you to decorate it with some finesse. Show me what you can do on top of a cupcake, yeah? Now, this thing here, the kitchen kitty. I want you to look at that box and take it serious. We're going to sell those cupcakes. We're going to split into two teams. Half of you will bake, and half of you will try to convince our prison officers to buy your cupcakes. I'll be a seller. You'll be a seller. I'm a seller. Can you get your hands out of your pocket and stop playing with yourself? <laughs> What is that? Yeah, no, no, but I, I need... I, 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 I need to see you. I need, please to see me. <laughs> OK? All the baking team have to do is follow my simple fairy cake recipe. Put the butter, put the butter and your sugar. Put the butter in your ear. Who put all the salt in there? <laughs> oh, Jesus. I couldn't see it. You got glasses I just on. Put them on, don't I? A pinch of salt. What does a pinch mean? They're all committing GBH against kegs round here. Guys, 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 look at me. All of you stop. We've all put the fucking butter into the flour. Fucking hell, who would have thought a fucking cupcake would fucking <laughs> throw that away? Jeez. Really a lot of call for cupcakes where I come from, you know what I mean? The prisoners just can't concentrate. My head's everywhere. <laughs> David Jones, an ex-soldier, is addicted to heroin. He became a thief to feed his habit. Yeah, don't worry, it's still too hard. Back in the oven for 30 seconds. Oh, I can. Yeah, just like that, and I'll, I'll, I'll help you again. I haven't seen my family for 20 years. I knew what it was like either on drugs or without drugs, you know? I was a bastard. I don't want to fail. I'm sick of failing. You know, I'm sick of it not getting somewhere or not being someone. Habitual offender Lawrence does seem to care about what he's doing. They look like they've just gone ponied up, didn't they? They're fine. But if we rush them, they're going to be raw. Then you're poisoned officers. How's that going to go down? Hell, you know, say la vie. Holy crap, who would have thought cupcakes would be so difficult? David Jones struggled. They just got carried away and... Completely screwed his up, but uh, personally, I thought that was going to be a disaster. Lawrence seemed to know what he was doing. I do cook sometimes, but it doesn't hurt to learn something, does it? Like, I've had pubs before through my life. If I'd have been out to cook properly, maybe I'd have done different things in my life and not ended up back in jail. Those not cooking cakes are selling them. There must be some sharp entrepreneurs here. They need a brand. Uh, with the name, I reckon we should call it Sweet Tooth. 
Who's on that? No. It's Cons Cakes. Yeah. It's, it's Cons Cakes. By, it's five by Gordon Ramsay made by convicts, yeah? Yeah. Right? Convict, oh, yeah. convict cupcakes. That's, convict that's, that's, cupcakes. That's the headline. Yeah, yeah especially being cupcakes. She's got to stand up. She's cakes in town. Oh, come on. Just let me just write it down, bro. Let me just write it down, man. You've got that in one's record. Yeah, I'm listening to everybody, but I can't listen to five people at the fucking same time, man. Now these domestic goddesses are going to decorate their fairy cakes. Let the imagination go. And don't forget, we're selling these. It's great decoration that sells a cupcake. Put the glitter on at the end, otherwise you're going to be going back, looking like a bunch of fairies coated in glitter. Designs range from disastrous... Your fucking nozzle's got to go inside the bag. You didn't know that. You didn't know that. <laughs> to the delectable. It's a customised cupcake. That's P, isn't it? That's my nickname, isn't it? And the downright dodgy. Nice. What's the theme? This one? Yeah. And he's in the space, isn't it, with the stars? Yeah, that, that's you fine when you're, when you're on crack. We're not on crack now, so we're not on fucking space. <laughs> <laughs> the glittering should be sprinkled lightly. Fucking hell. It's like someone's had the runs on top of that one. I am not going to sell that, yeah? Next to that, let me tell you. What, which one would you buy? This one. Thank you very much. But one burglar has done a lovely little job. Did you seriously do that? Yeah. Did you? Yeah. Did he do that? Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's nice. It's not too bad. Yeah, very nice. Yeah, it's not too bad at all. Beautiful. That one, that okay. One, that one, that one, like no, we're not. No, no, no. No, you're not going to have that one yourself. We're selling them. <laughs> Stop. Come on, trick. No, 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 no. We're going to sell them. Back in the cupcake marketing department. The ruthless criminals can't resist a little bit of glitter. Convict cupcakes poster, designed by Tesla over there. You know, we uh, you know promoted your name in it so we could sell more. Right. You know, real taste of prison. I like the colours. The convict's cupcake shop is popping up just outside A Wing. You'd like four? Yeah. Brilliant. Selling them are my hustlers. Anthony Kelly and Tesfa Jones. Yeah. Yeah. I think you like cakes, didn't you? Push, push, push. We've got a customer there. Wow. Tell her, James, you're going, look. Some more lovely looking ones. Cool, made yeah. by prisoners Good, yeah. inspired by Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, pick it, pick it out, pick it out. Thanks, yeah. Aaron. They can start really earning some legit cash here. I need a pound each. Yep. I wasn't going to charge you two quid, but you look all right. I'll charge you a pound. <laughs> Great. Do you want a couple? Uh, yeah, can I have, uh... Yeah. F3, one of it, strawberry, chocolate and vanilla. Well done. Did you take the pan? Yeah, I'm watching you like a hawk. I'm damn right I'm keeping hold of the fucking kitty box, let me tell you. You can see that's going to disappear. Oh, one very pink. One very pink. So that's 49 quid we've taken, 20 of which is profit. And this little box at the beginning of something pretty major. Cos if I can turn 40 quid into four grand a week, yeah. it's going to take a lot of yeah. sweat. Yeah. Pain. Yeah. Now I'm going to think long and hard about who from this group will make my final 12. Are you scared of hard work? I'm not scared of hard work at all. I've done it in the past, you know what I mean? It's just that it, I think it depends on what I'm doing. The big question is, when was the last time you worked 60 hours in a week? Straight work? Yeah. Never. 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 I've been in Brixton prison for a week to get prisoners cooking on the inside to sell on the outside. I've got six months to make my project a success. What job did you have before you got to Brixton? Do you know what, Gold? I've never worked, mate. I'm ashamed of it to say it, really. The government want to double the numbers of prisoners grafting and are looking to expand their working prison scheme. It's easier life in jail than it is outside. In here, you've got everything done for you. But even the Justice Secretary believes prisons aren't delivering as they should. They obviously don't work. So if it don't work, you need to fix it. During the cupcake test, I observed all my convicts up close. And back at home, I'm going to choose my 12 bad boys for my brigade. Where do you start? It's been hard to get 12 because they're all the same. They're all shit. And they're all, they're all got issues. Why should they be sat there 18, 19 hours a day in a non-productive cell doing jack shit? <sighs> Lawrence Gibbons, Joan. He's 45 years of age, 79 convictions. And where the hell do you start with that? How do you get this guy disciplined? I don't care about any of the victims in any of my cases all through my life. 
right? But if I can better myself and get something out of it, it's better than doing nothing. Thief Tesla Jones is a career criminal. He's been inside seven times. If you're in prison and you're serving a long time, you start to get used to your whole surroundings. They call it institutionalised, yeah, right? You start to get institutionalised and, and it becomes nothing. It becomes, it becomes a holiday camp. These men don't even understand the concept of an honest day's work. Anthony Kelly, he's never had a job in his life, and yet he's got the gift of the gap. Burglary, and you look at him, he's a big sort of happy-go-lucky, almost like a big puppy. Who would have thought he's going to be putting a balaclava on at half past two in the fucking morning? It's weird, it's almost like they go inside, they get sentenced and they become little boys. Prison don't change people, people change themselves. So I think I've just got old, I've got, I've, I've got tired of it. I've got tired of this old bollocks, the same old shit. Listen to these fuckers tell me what to do, so when they want, I mean, I'm sick of it. I'm sick to the back teeth of it. But you know what, You've got, everyone's got to have enough pain before they stop. What I've got to look for is the passion, the hunger. This is not sat on your ass. We're going to hopefully generate, you know, a, a busy, bloody kitchen. I've chosen my bad boy's dirty dozen. This is the team who will work in my pilot business. Guys, come over. Come over, come over. This lot don't know what's going to hit them. How are you feeling? Good morning, you good? How are you? You look cold. Yeah, yeah. It's cold out there. It's cold. Come on. Let's take that jacket off. Yes. See how cold you yeah, are. Yeah. Okay, you want me to take my jacket off? Take the jacket off. See how warm you get. That's it. That's he, it. He grew up in Scotland. He's used to this. Yeah. <laughs> okay, here's the good news. You're the final 12. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. Uh, you're on fire this morning. <laughs> Each and every one of you are going to be putting back into this prison. You are the first 12 to get this business going. It's not about pissing around with glitter. This is real, and it's going to get tougher. We're running a business. You're going to learn, yeah? You're going to earn, and you're going to put back inside to this prison. How's that make you feel? Great. Yeah. Good. Well. Good. Can't wait to start grafting. You know, and here again in the kitchen, start cooking. A lot of these prisoners, we all need tough love. It's like the love your mum will give you. And remember, we're in prison. We need to be bloody told off. This is my first day teaching the Bad Boys Brigade. To get more done, I've radically changed these prisoners' routine. They're eating in the kitchen, not in their cells. The guys that we lock up here, they know. They know when they're going to get out of their cell. They know what time they're going to be locked up. Any change to that, it messes the system up, it messes with their head. But when things change, that's when, when, when things start going wrong. Sure enough, just the idea of change has sent Lawrence Gibbons off on one. What's wrong? Uh, He's thrown a hissy fit. He wants to eat in his cell where he keeps his tomato sauce. Yeah, let's go. What's the matter? I'm not hanging about here when I have to the wings. I have my fucking lunch. Yeah. And you've got my sauces that I've got. Please go away with that. Is that you done completely? Well, That's it. Could you, um, could you take him back to the wing, please? Losing Lawrence is bad enough, but his walkout spreads dissent in the ranks. Listen to him. Listen to him. Over a bit of sauce. Fuck him. Let him crack on with it. Not much teamwork going on here. You're talking rubbish, but the man wants his sauce for his food, bro. I do understand, but it's still the reality is the bigger picture is shit in it. Yeah. It's the bigger, but what I'm trying to say to you is the bigger 
Gucci is shit in it. Yeah. Yeah. Even more. 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 Even and shouting at each other. Let's talk nicely. And let's remember, we're a team. They're so used to their routine, and the minute you change one little thing, bang. They're like a bunch of fucking babies. I'm just realising what a shambles this so-called brigade is turning out to be. I don't think he's going to hang on to them. They act against any kind of authority, really, when they're told to do something. To stand a chance of getting this scheme to work in the time I've got, we need to be selling a product to the public in four weeks' time. I want to prove to these guys that they can work together as a unit. So I've got a plan, but it's a very ambitious plan that could make or break them. I'm going to put them under intense pressure and get them to cook an entire meal for the whole prison. Daryl Hatfield is in charge of Brixton's prison kitchen. Morning, sir. Hello, Gordon. Are you well? Oh, yeah, fine. I want permission to make a chili con carne for the 800 inmates. A little bit blunt. Uh, I want to ask um, if I could borrow this kitchen for a day. What I want to do is get them in here cooking. So can I come up with a dish and cook for the prison? The evening meal? The main meal, please. With your new brigade? With my... yeah. That's a massive task for you and a new brigade. But the prison specifications say that we provide a minimum of five choices. Five choices every day? Yeah. Shit, I can't just do one dish. No. We've got customers that have no choice to go anywhere else. The customers here get very upset if their meals are messed with. Screw up and we can have a riot on our hands. We hit the deadline. 4.15? Yeah. We must hit that deadline. Well, Gordon Ramsay's Gordon Ramsay. But for someone to come in here and be in charge of 12 people who have never done any form of catering, never mind produce five main dishes, I can't believe the task he's taking on. This whole idea, you know, has just turned out to be a, a head fuck, to be honest, because now we've got to offer five choices. He says customers, I say prisoners. He says choices, I say fuck off. You sure they wouldn't like any fucking blini and caviar to start? I've chosen my bad boys brigade for my startup business in Brixton Prison. This morning, I'm getting them up two hours early. I'm challenging my rookies to work as a team to make dinner for the entire prison. So what are they like, generally, getting up early in the morning? It all depends if anyone's been watching the late film. The brigade can't cook and constantly bicker, but if they pull it off, my business may be in with a chance. Thank you. It's so quiet. I've got to launch a product made by them to the public in a month's time. It's so quiet. I mean, it always feels like we're breaking in. It's weird. But there's an eerie silence. Morning, Renee. Paul. It's 6.30. My brigade is a man down after Lawrence walked out. Hello, mate. We've got two minutes. Yeah. Right now, I need all the help I can get, and Lawrence is one of the best cooks I've got. Tempers aren't going to fray that bad that we're going to chin someone. Do you know what I mean? Let's go and see how many Sure. Yeah. Do you know where, uh, where I come from on this one? We're the same age. There's a quite a nice level of maturity. No, no, I'm serious. You're quite a calm influence over them. Do you know why? Because you don't tolerate the shit. And I'm not here to push buttons. No, I'm here to help. The last time I catered for 800 people, I had a team of 45 fully trained chefs. This time, I've got 12 novices who couldn't make scrambled eggs. At least Lawrence has agreed to come back. Let's go, guys. Quick, quick, quick. Running, let's go. Come over, guys. The 800 prisoners always eat in their cells, but we're not improving prison food. My aim is to see if the brigade can carry this off. If they can, I might finally have a team. 
We're, we're 30 minutes behind already. Five main courses. Start off with a chili. Halal, 150 portions. Yeah. 250 portions of a normal chili. After that, we got two vegetarian dishes. One vegan, one vegetarian. 50 portions of vegan and 100 portions of a vegetarian bake. After that, we're going to do a chicken and mushroom pie. 100 portions. Uh, guys, guys, yeah, I need the veg, yeah, so I can start the stock. Once I've got the stock rolling, I can start actually making the chilli, which we've got 400 portions of. Veg prep is 90% of the battle. I'm taking a really big risk and putting argumentative Tesfa Jones in charge. T, yeah. you OK? Yeah, I'm fine. Yeah, yeah look at me. Yeah. Nice and calm. Yeah. And we're working as a team. Yeah. yeah? You're part of that team. Yeah, so I want you to come across like a team member. Right. Let's go. We've got to do 40 trays. Yeah, I've got some now. Look how bad these potatoes are, eh? Yeah? This is what we get in prison. This is what we've got to work with. Everybody on the outside could see that we're not living in luxury. Eh? As you don't think. You won't put that in your pot, would you? Hmm? I've never seen anything like what Gordon Ramsay's doing. I'm not saying that he's, he's, he's going to change me and I'm going to come out, I'm going to be a big change man and, you know what I mean, I'm going to heaven all of a sudden and stuff like that, but it's something that you can hold on to. One career criminal I want to stop ducking and diving is Lawrence. I put him in charge of the main dish of the day, chilli con carne. Portion-wise, you've got 260. 240. 240, and you're doing 160. Lawrence is up against it. Fresh chillies. He may not be a team player, but he's not afraid of new experiences. I've tried most things. I think the best, the best thing in like the late 80s, early 90s, was the drug, the drug game. Everyone had a good time. Pastry, how are we doing? You got short crust on the bottom, puff paste on top, yeah? yeah. Have a look for it in the fridge. Cockney Anthony Kelly is running the bakery section. They've got 250 portions of chicken and mushroom pies to make. Mix the margarine and flour and a bit of baking powder. Just common sense, really. Just what it says, do what it says. That's it, lovely, lovely. Oh, well, you're not feeding the queen, you know, that'll do. <laughs> we ain't feeding the queen. Yeah. So that the boys on the wing. We've been going two hours. The pies are on track, but elsewhere, we're in trouble. We're running behind, and the vegetable section is backing us up because we're, we're struggling. With 800 servings of roast potatoes to prepare, Tespa and the veg team are in deep waters, and it's freezing. What do you mean it's too cold? Bring the... Bring the... Oh, bring the oh, what's the matter with you? That's that too cold. Freezing. Get out of here, will you? That's you. Freezing. What's the matter with you? No, nothing. Do you want some gloves? No. It's A wetsuit right. to get the potatoes out. I'm beginning to think these prisoners are molly coddled. Do you know what I'm starting to see so early on? What? I think it's too easy. Do you know what I mean when one of the boys told me last night he was watching telly all night? Lawrence, yeah. I can't watch television all night. Well, I, watch, I watch TV since four o'clock this morning. So it's easier inside than it is on the outside. If you can wangle the system and get what you what you need, what's best for you, then you, you sorted it, didn't you? Everyone's banging on about the reoffending percentage, but you can see why it is. Almost it's like a sort of a little personal hotel in their neighbourhood. Which is so wrong. I can't believe it. The bakery section is flying. Anthony and David have got 11 huge pies ready. David's barely, you know, standing up. And Anthony's sweating like a pig, do you know what I mean? So it's like a, it's like a kitchen of misfits. However, they're not giving up. That's the most important part. One, two, three, four. Six o'clock in the morning, we've been here all fucking day. We've worked our bollocks off. Fair play to us, eh? You know better sit on a foxy wheel and run it. Doing fuck all, innit? And you know what? This might be the turning point. Well, I'll never come back to prison again. But I'll become a good father. I'll become a fucking be there for people who love me. Do you know what I mean? Instead of letting every fucker down. Half an hour to go, and my main courses are almost done. Okay, steam, yeah. rolling oil, back in and roast. Work as a team, guys. But Tesla and his team still have 40 trays of potatoes to roast. Get them out. Yeah, that's nice, that's nice. 7.20, 3 times 10. You got 11.20, yeah. yeah? The final orders are in from the wings, and Lawrence's hard work has paid off. His chilli is ready. Have a taste. We'll get stronger as it comes out. Yeah. Huh? 
It is nice. Yeah. When are they going to pick it up? A couple of minutes. Two minutes. The boys are pulling out all the stops. This has been a massive task, and I think I may have a team at last. Yeah, we're ready, we're ready. Ten of us coming here today, we've worked our bollocks off all together, and, the, and everything's on time. And do you know what? I bet the food's better than usual. Dow's gonna give the call. Concentrate. Don't start shouting over each other. Roast potatoes, one wreck. I feel like you've done something, innit? Productive. See, if you was at work, that pain would equal money. Come on, I need to be calling G Wing for their tea in a minute. Yeah. Chili con carne. I'm coming. Coming's no good. Living up. Four of us basically made dinner for 800 people. I'm off to G Wing to find out what our customers think. Much better than last time. It looks better than last time? Yeah, I can see onions on top. Last time it was just black color. Oh, really? On oh, no, a proper onion gravy? Yeah, you can see the difference. Right Where are you from? Lithuania. Lithuania. It's a lovely Dublin, mate. What do you have? Halal. Yeah, halal one. Halal chili. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Lovely, mate. Bellissimo. <laughs> um, I honestly didn't think we were going to make that this morning. We set them a task. I didn't think it was possible to pull it off. And I was slightly concerned that they were going to shy away from six, seven, oh, eight hour day. But they've been on their feet 10 hours, and it's been a long one. Uh, but it's, it's, gone, it's gone well. God, they were lively. Huh? Unfortunately, it's not all good news. Back at the kitchen, there's been a serious incident. Right, guys, let's go. T, Lawrence, I need you for two minutes, please. Seriously, guys, this is where I think that I've been let down today, because I've just been told that we've found this in the dressing room and someone's been nicking. Onions, chilies and garlic. Oh. Look, 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 guys. No, no, really. Yeah, I missed it. Yeah, it makes me feel stupid. We cannot steal from the kitchen. Anyone? Right. Who does this belong to? I thought it was from my yeah, I, took, I, I, I wasn't staying. I just took some onions. Okay. I thought they were spare, so I took some onions. Okay. Who else took it? Some yeah. bollocks. Come I on. I took it. Okay. okay. Yeah, I took it. Yeah, I took it. Yeah, I took some garlic. Yeah. Thank you. We cannot take anything out of the kitchen. Next week, it'll be a knife. No chance. We stop now. I just saw it as a bit of, of, as a perk, innit? I just saw it as a perk. I took a couple oh, look at me. So I can cook, in, cook it myself. Yeah, that gets me yeah. into serious shit. I, I, so look I, at I me. Wasn't thinking. But you're letting me yeah, down and you thinking. let your team down. I it's dealt with. Yeah. Let's move on. Yeah, I wasn't thinking. I just thought there was extras. Yeah. What I don't want them to do now is falling out and arguing with each other. That's the problem. They get one little issue and it becomes massive and they flip. What a fucking joke. What an embarrassment. Oh, don't say to me nothing, yeah? Easy, easy. It's all done. Yeah? It's all said and done, bro. Don't. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Uh -oh. Once the rowing starts, no one backs down. This lot will argue about anything. You want to suck someone? Simple as. Yeah? Hey, guys, guys, let's finish on the high. Let's finish on the high. Let's not waste 10 hours of graft. I can't believe. After all their great teamwork and success, my brigade's falling apart in front of my eyes. Oh, okay, now. That's all I'm saying, innit? No, no, no. Because you lot think and it's taking it out and everybody else for it. I'm going to go back to this. You're missing out for everybody else. That's it. From today, I'm finished. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm finished. What's going on? I'm just what coming back. You know this course? I'm not doing it. That's no, it. That's 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 it some really good workers, and the ones that I thought weren't going to work and stay focused did. Yeah, I'm over a barrel in many ways, because I could, I could be six short within a 30-second argument, and that's, that's the knife edge. My biggest problem is going to be keeping the team together. That's where, I, that's where I've got my work cut out, because there's so many feisty, insecure characters that it's almost sort of built on a stack of cards. And it was stuck in the carriage, yeah? I've got a fight on my hands. Oh, my
This is where the ante goes up and up and up. The rule I ask you, but don't eat anything. That's a blade missing. The attitude we got yesterday is like, you know, some thief in bastards. So frustrating. So frustrating. I'll just turn that off. Thank you. I've given myself six months in Brixton prison to set up a pilot business. Thank you. My hope, to try and get prisoners cooking on the inside to sell on the outside. Here we go again. But I'm handcuffed before I even start. There's six locked gates between me and my production kitchen, and I haven't got the keys. It's harder being a control freak because everything you do in the kitchen, you're in charge and in control of. Here, it's they're in control of you. That's the big difference. I want to see if prisoners can pay something back. So, to get them earning, I'm going to try and set up a catering business behind bars. Out of the 800 men locked up in Brixton, I've chosen 12 bad boys for my brigade. I'm not really a troublemaker, you know. I'm a kind of a good person, that's what I think. But obviously, people take me the wrong way, innit? Like, like more my innit? You either like me, you hate me, innit? Pretty bad in the mornings. Because he don't, he don't get out of bed till like, nah. Do you? I've been taking drugs for so many years. From my heart, I mean, I want to stay clean. But it's not as easy as you get out and it's hard to stay clean. It's taken 45 minutes to get through six locked doors and finally make it into my new kitchen. Thank you. What's that? This is it. This is where it's all going to happen. I mean, this is the engine room of my prison business. And those prisoners are going to be working their asses off in here. But what chance do I stand of getting a full day's work out of convicted criminals? They're not here for no reason. They. Some of these people are dangerous, so he's got to he's got to be careful. They very reactionary. They don't stop and think. They just going to stand there and argue the toss. And this is where the ante goes up and up and up. One of my brigade who likes to up the ante is Jerome Samuels. I've got a bad reputation in it. I'm kind of basic and back chat and rude to officers in it. It's people like that that are against you. This one is see you fail. For continually disrespecting officers on A-Wing, he's been put onto a basic routine, which means losing valued privileges on the wing. It's not like when you be good, good things come to you. When you're bad, bad things come to you. Sorry. And the one that hurts most is no TV. See in prison, what the eye don't see, it's a good thing. TV. Listen. Be in your secret. Having smuggled a TV set into his basic cell, it's clear Jerome doesn't care about authority. God help me. They got pressures from the outside, pressures of courts, pressures of being in prison. That's why our job is talking to people. If I thought it was impossible, don't think I could do my job. I've got to believe that there's a hope that you can actually make some sort of difference. Before I can set up a business, I've got to teach my brigade to cook. But running a kitchen in a prison means getting my head around a whole new level of security. So I've got my belt of keys. Can I get rid of this fucking whistle? Sorry, I mean, I mean... Uh, you have to keep it on because something happened in the So you have to keep hold of the whistle? All the things. The prisoners have to use knives to become chefs, and the governor has agreed to let them have their own sets but under strict conditions. At the end of the session, 
You must account for these tools in, in the hands of someone who intends to do some damage to another person. That is one lethal weapon. To protect me, as well as the prisoners, access to the knives will be strictly controlled at all times. And this has to stay locked every time, right? Yeah. OK. Thank you. Worryingly for me, the one thing I haven't got is the key to the exit. Let's get them in, Sean. Yeah, thank you. I'm starting to feel like the prisoners aren't the only ones who are banged up. Yeah. Morning, morning. You good? Well, yeah. You well? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The last time this lot worked together, it almost fell apart. Right, guys, hats on, please. So, I want to make a few things clear. My kitchen, my rules, every time you walk through those doors, understand we're coming here to what? We cannot start pissing around, joking around. When we piss around and the job's not getting done, you're going to hear me, guys. Right, this is where I'm up against it here. These things. If one of those goes missing, this place can get shut down in minutes. And if somebody does that to me, to the team, I'm going to be so pissed off, OK? Right, all of you get into pairs and find a section. If this lot are going to graft alongside me, they need to know how to cook. Yeah, man. But even making a simple soup and baking bread is an uphill struggle. One desert spoon, yeah? One litre of boiling water onto one desert spoon, yeah? So we're looking for two litres, so it's two spoons in this. And we can do it. You know what I mean? We've got this opportunity and we can do it. I'm hoping it actually does change my life, innit? Like, well, I'll get the qualification, I come out and get a job, like, bam, straight like that, innit? Hey, it's feel hard. It feels hard, no one's wrong. Soft, mate. Oh, Mr. Ramsey, no, I, I need a Mr. Wyatt for healthcare. Mr. Wyatt? Yes. Oh, uh, so, how long will it be? It should hopefully just be about 10 minutes. OK, go as quick as I can. OK. You know, they're keen to learn, but everything's rigid in here and they get taken away when they're called upon. Paul Wyatt's a recovering heroin addict. A staggering 62% of prisoners start their sentences as drug users. Paul can't get through the day without a dose of methadone. I started taking heroin when I was about 16, 17. I didn't start taking the crack till I was 23. That's when things got really out of control. And you don't start taking drugs thinking, yeah, I'm going to be a junkie. You know what I mean? You think you can control it. At 16, Paul wanted to be a chef, but only lasted a few months at Catering College. That was the biggest mistake of my life, taking drugs. Now I've got the keys for that. Fucking hell. Why is the door locked? Why can't we just have the fucking door open? Well, we're prisoners, innit? Prisoners or not, this system's doing my nutting. What it's doing is just screwing up any chance of getting anything done efficiently. And what's it going to be like if we do go into production? And we are busy. I mean, opening a locker, placard for a, a chopping board, no ladles because they're not etched. I mean, what are these guys going to do with a chopping board? Lawrence, number six, where's your box? It's the moment of truth. Time to get the knives out. Chopping knife, yeah? If we're going to make any money out of this kitchen, my brigade have to have the tools to do the job. Off you go. Be careful. However dangerous they may be. B, Ricardo. Yeah. Next number. Yes. This is times like this. I wish you guys were just internet fraud, not gun Sorry. crimes. Go the internet fraud. I can have the whole thing open every day. No one's here to try and play around with knives. I haven't seen anyone that's behaving as if they want to use the knife or be miscellaneous with the knife or anything like that now. It's a bit stupid, I think. I understand they're knives, but they're in the kitchen. In this kitchen, I've got criminals, not chefs. One of them, Lawrence Gibbons, has got a list of convictions as long as my arm. My first thing was uh, robbing post offices. I went to some old man, I needed some money going on with And he said, when I was your age, I was out robbing banks. And when I got arrested and I was in Canterbury prison on demand, my old man came up on a visit and he punched me straight in the nose. 
<laughs> he said, I never told you to get caught, did I, you fucking idiot? The guy's 45 years of age. He's stuck in his ways, and I've seen him work bloody good. I mean, he can graft, but he has a temper. I mean, a big temper. Guys, taste as well, don't forget. Yeah, no one's tasting. Yeah? For this business to work, all my brigade have got to become a team. But Lawrence can't seem to work alongside Rene Smith. I can't tighten that, mate. Seriously, can't. Too much Charlie. Too much what? Can't tell if it's salty or not. Oh. He said Charlie. I did say Charlie. Oh. I don't know what the fuck about that number. Sometimes, when you work on a wing, the atmosphere changes, and it's a very subtle change. It feels unsettled. The place can erupt. Like, sometimes it's over the slightest thing. Fucking woke up, my young man. You're fucking Yeah? You're fucking... He ran in with a fucking hand. We won't really do that. Hey, hey, you got Yeah? Yeah. Come on. Come out to the toilet. I'll smash you to pieces. You fucking prick. I'm in Brixton prison, trying to get these prisoners working. Guys, taste as well, don't forget. Yeah, no one's tasting. But tempers are already reaching boiling point. Come on. I'll smash you to pieces, you fucking prick. An explosive argument between Lawrence and Rene about their workspace has brought the kitchen to a standstill. Stupid. I don't know what that's all about. What's this messed up my whole vibe today, mate? Listen, guys. We're one hour into this. We're not going to fight. No one's going to fight in here. We've got to keep it together. Thank you. I've got to face facts. I took a gamble on Lawrence Gibbons, but it hasn't paid off. When there's knives around, I just can't take a risk on someone who is so aggressive. Hello, Lawrence. You got two minutes. Have a word in the, in the cellar, sec, please. Do you regret it? I think I've done rather well. Six months ago, I'd have jumped all over him. So I've walked away from him, and I think that's the best thing I've done to him, is to walk away from him and ignore him. I suppose I'm more pissed off that here we are, so early on, and you fly off the handle. I've been spoke to by an idiot like him like that. I know, but we're under more fucking pressure last time cooking for the prison. And you held your own. That's what I'm more pissed with. That's all. Stay out of him, stay out of him. Well, I'm going to ask you to leave the course. Gordon, that's yours. It's up to you, mate. Tightly up to you, mate. For me, it's a missed opportunity, that's all. Well, I'm sorry Jeremy. it works out like that. You know what I mean? And I wish you all the best. <sighs> sorry, chaps. I'm a man down, but I'm certain it's for the good of the brigade. He's not a team player. Bloody frustrating. And a great shame, because when he puts his head down, he can graft. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell, come on, guys. Now you've run fucking locked out. That's the nap, Zach. All right. The bollocks. Lovely news. Back in my kitchen, all the knives have been handed in. But there's a serious problem. Guys, we're missing a speed peeler. No one's leaving until that speed peeler's found. Can everyone look for it, please? A speed peeler, i.e. a potato peeler. In here, the blade of a potato peeler is as dangerous as a knife. And in the wrong hands, could be used as a lethal weapon. So they'll manufacture tools from anything, from chair legs, they might sharpen the ends, they'll find toothbrushes, they'll maybe uh, put a couple of razor blades on the ends. They're usually two blades, and they're usually just slightly separated, so when they do cut, it's hard to sew back up again. I gave mine back to G anyway. My, my, I gave her the peel, I gave her the peel and the light things. So I ain't looking for it, it ain't mine. No one can go, no one can go to the bathroom until that's found. <laughs> Three hours into the day, and now my kitchen's in lockdown. What a disaster. You know, a fight, and Lawrence... 
acting the way he did and kicking off, and then now a speed peeler doing there's a blade missing. That's the kind of shit we could be uh, in. And no one knows where it is, Jimmy. We've looked all through this kitchen, but now security have been called in and have taken over. We've had to leave um, because the peel is gone and uh, everyone's been uh, searched now rigorously because, yeah. Because where it might end up, basically, the tool. If it was taken apart and reassembled in a different fashion, then it could be a dangerous weapon. Jesus. It's the next morning, and my kitchen has been well and truly turned over. Bloody hell. My team thought they had counted out 12 peelers. That was our mistake. Security strip searched the prisoners and only then checked the infantry to discover there were only ever 11 peelers. It stresses the fact that this is the consequences of us making a mistake. I suppose we got to it Quicker. before the strip, yeah. before the search, that's yeah. all. Security came in, shut us down. Everyone's, you know, clothes off, and it's like, oh, no. And so, it, you know, that's, ah, fuck up. And they're pissed yeah. off. Yeah, we've got yeah. strip search. I was stripped. You took us in naked. Yeah. You may not want to directly say it to us, but the eyes don't lie. You understand? The eyes don't lie. And the attitude we got yesterday is like, you know, some thief in bastards. Yeah. Right now, we, we're supposed to behave like what? Like trainee chefs, innit? But we got treated like criminals in, in the kitchen. Because we're prisoners. That's all it is. If it was in a normal kitchen on the outside, take a pill up missing, fuck it, buy a new one. Morning, gents. My team made a counting error, but I think security should have checked the infantry before the strip search. For the sake of my business, I've got to get the guys back on side, and that means facing up to our mistakes. Right, listen, first of all, yeah, I'm going to apologise for the humiliation. We didn't lose a peeler, yeah? 11 came in. We should have double-checked. Anyone got anything else to say about it? Get a book. Right, right guy, let everything what you got done. Yeah. Take that time. That's done. That's done. Well, all right, then. I'm depending on these guys to work alongside me. And after this cock-up, I really owe them. Bony knife, vegetable knife, right? Don't cut yourself. We need a money-making product that can launch this business. So while they carry on learning with my assistant, G, I'm off to test out some recipes. I've got a hunch that combining some childhood favourites of mine might just give us the edge. Lemon curd, for me, growing up, was always that little bit of, ooh, luxury. And it tastes delicious. So, first up, a classic with a twist. Lemon curd, treacle tart. Jamie, into the oven. Yeah? Yeah. Carefully. Thank you. I got a tray there for you. Thank you. Why do you want to do the hard way? Huh? And using the lemon curd base again for a different spin on a bakewell. It's the kind of stuff for me that I grew up with. But mum used to run a little tea house called the Cobweb Tea House Restaurant. And the only thing I ever wanted was either carrot cake, bakewell tart, or treacle tart. It was so delicious. It may work, it may not work. It may be too lemony. You never know unless you try, so... Thank you. Two covers, prawns, bass, followed by mutton pie burger, yes? Really, how long for that child? Yes. The Bakewell's not quite the unique taste I'm looking for. The product I feel could have selling power is the lemon treacle tart. Fucking delicious. Sorry. Lemon curd, it just gives that double... double, double deliciousness. I mean, it, honestly. It's rich, it's creamy, and it's just, wow, that works. I think this tart is the kind of standout product we need to build a business on. So today, I'm taking my biggest gamble yet. I'm not only going to put the tart to the test. So that's 100 little loaves? Yeah. Cool, cut them in half. Yes. Uh, scones, 100? Yeah. I want to take advantage of everything wow. the boys have learned to bake so far and sell it all in bulk to the public. Yeah, we've got the best kitchen in Brixton here. It's got to get fired up. Everything's got to be full. 
If all these ovens are full in an hour's time, then we'll, you know, I'll feel a little bit more relaxed. When you go buy this, it's for prisoners, or shouldn't they be given a chance? Like that. Especially with the crime rate that it supposedly is. Nah. Good luck. <laughs> right, guys, come round, please, quickly. Come round, come round. Listen, we're going to be setting up an opening for the first time, yeah? A pop-up bakery. Everything we produce today is going to be sold to the public. And I need to leave here with a van full, not of prisoners, but of tarts. <laughs> I'm serious. I need to get this stuff yeah. out of here. We need a catchy name for the yeah. shop. Take a pen. I'm thinking Bad Boys Bakery. What do the lads think? Lemon. Real well made tarts. tarts. Have a tarty party. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fucking cake shop, not Ann Summers. Huh? <laughs> Made by HMP Brixton inmate tarts. Yeah? Nick these, I'll cut your fucking hands off. <laughs> <laughs> we, can't, we can't put that. <laughs> Cheese, uh, next. And bad boy bakers. Bad boy bakers. I love that idea, or bad boy bakery. But this is no BS now. We are going out and we are facing the British public and we are going to be telling them everything you buy here has been made by prisoners. OK? So, the Bad Boys Bakery is born. Let's crack on, let's get working. Excited? Excited. Yeah. OK, good. Let's go, guys, yeah? Of course, anything to do with prisons, people are a bit wool weary, you know, and that's, that's understandable. You don't necessarily want to be bad people, but it's about changing, and by us doing this, gives us that bit of hope that we believe we can get a job. We're human, do you know what I mean? We ain't all monsters, do you know what I mean? I've got a fucking conscience and a heart. No, I can never change what I've done, but I can change what I'm gonna do. Oh, shit. I suppose put the butter in that, uh, the tin. Yeah, it's quite technical. They've got to cook and learn at the same time, but I've got to sell. So we can't afford any mistakes, because everything they make, you know, I've got to get a return on it. Don't throw any pastry away, guys, yeah? Every time we throw pastry away, we throw money in the bin. To make sure we draw in the customers, I want the prisoners themselves to drum up some business. So I need you to put a phone call in tonight. Mum, auntie, yeah. tell them to get down. This is 22-year-old Jerome Samuel's first time in an adult jail. But he's been in and out of trouble all his life. God's sake. Do you know what I mean? Been in the streets since huh? I was a young boy. How old were you when you first hit the streets? Twelve. Twelve. Have you been inside the young offenders? Yeah. Where? Oak Hill. Uh-huh. Felton. From Rochester. Felton. From Portland. Boy, my life's nothing but crime, innit? Like from a young age, innit? When I was young, innit? My dad died, then my granddad died. I see my granddad laid face down, innit? It burnt me, innit? And obviously, I just thought, you know what? Fuck this. I give up. Like, I ain't got nothing to lose no more. Like, my mum and that would shout at me. You wouldn't shout, you'd just give me the look. And you'd not, you'd, you'd, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't do it again, like, you'd stop. So when he was gone, he was thinking, like, right, didn't have no look. Since being in Brixton, the prison authorities have been unhappy about Jerome's behaviour. Today, things have stepped up a gear. Oh, sir. He's been called to a disciplinary hearing. I need you come. One second. I'm going to finish it. Listen, if, 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 if the officer wants you now, you can trust me, I'll finish that. Good luck. If you want to be his own worst enemy, it makes things hard for yourself. Why doesn't he just keep it shut, do you know what I mean? But authority seems to mean nothing to Jerome. It's already done. You tore it up. Yes. And senior officer Andy Cole has had enough. You see what I'm saying, though? You don't like being an angry boy. You don't like me. Jerome is charged with verbally abusing a female officer. And if found guilty, he could be kicked out of my business for good. One of the things we notice often is that we're usually the first sort of adults that have ever said no to them. He's not the worst. By far, he's not oh, the worst. God. But he has to realise that he's in an adult establishment and he's got to act like an adult. Today's hearing is in front of Wing Governor Neil Craig. You'll stand in front of the Governor and state your name and number, please. A6191AM, Samuels. Right, I'm Governor Craig here in this this morning. OK, you've been charged under Prison Rule 51, Paragraph 20, that you use threatening, abusive or insulting words of behaviour. And how do you plead to that charge? Not guilty, sir. And do you want any help at this hearing? Yes, sir. 
Yes. Nugu representation in it. Right, you have asked for legal advice. I am going to remand it for a week. OK. Thank you. Thank you, sir. The case is adjourned. So for now, Jerome stays. And my workforce is still up to strength for the task ahead. Ooh, touch, play, gang banger. Ooh. I'm in Brixton prison, trying to get prisoners out of their cells and working. Tomorrow, my bad boy's bakery starts selling cakes, bread and tarts to the UK public for the first time in our one-day-only pop-up shop. 40 half, 20 hole, yeah? Let's go. Heading up the bakery section is Anthony Kelly, who is clearly a natural-born seller. Anthony, who are going to phone later? Tell me. Um, Carl, Carl. Anyone else? What about Mum, Dad? Um, my mum's dead. My mum died. They were screwed Um, Dad's in Liverpool. Right, and how long ago did Mum die? Um, when I was 12. Was a kid, but um, I was killed. I was only 30 years old. By that time, I was already running wild, I mean. Did you do coke at 10? I was 10 years of age, I was about 20 years old. I was smoking pepper on a But I mean, now, now eight months bollocks. clean, yeah, you know. I've got bollocks wet. I've got two boys myself, 15, 11. I said, I'm going to give them a drug dog. You know, I'm embarrassed about the way I've lived my life. And you know what? That shame and that guilt has made me change. Do you know what I mean? Living the way of life, ducking and diving. It's all fake, it's all bollocks, it's all false. I took the first step by changing the knee, I'm doing something. And I've got to take responsibility for my actions. So I've got three lovely kids. It's about the time I fucking grew up and fucking got a pair of bollocks. Uh, Anthony, I just count how many loaves are there, please. With the ovens fired up, the kitchen's really delivering on bread and scones. Third batch, fourth. How many you made? About seven. Seven. About eight. But there's a major problem with the lemon treacle tarts. Oh, fucking hell. I mean, honestly, I mean, honestly. Who lined this? Look, they'll never cook. Fucking what a waste of time. I didn't anticipate that mass producing these tarts would be so difficult. And this is supposed to be the centerpiece product of the bad boys bakery. Absolute fucking disaster. That's what's going on. Total waste of time, effort, money, disaster. I haven't got one tart cooked. We've been going for three hours. Everybody else has been producing great scones, great bread at the back, and here we're looking, we're looking stupid. Then a bomb drops. I've been called to see Jerome's senior officer on A-Wing, Andy Cole. Yeah, he wants to have a word. Because he wants to kick Jerome off the course. Jeez. Never ending. Sir? The disciplinary hearing may have been delayed for a week, but Mr Cole has his own opinion of what should happen to Jerome. On the discipline side, he is an absolute nightmare. He is on basic. Um, he is so disrespectful to staff, and when he comes back on the wing, he's demanding this, demanding that. Right. It's just unfortunate what you're telling me, I totally respect, but I don't see any of that to that level inside that kitchen. No. But from my point of view as a discipline senior officer, we would like him removed. If he was 32 and he'd been around the block a few times, mm. I would 100% agree with you. Get him out of there. What I would like to ask for is just a bit more time just to convince you, and I'll have a word with him, he needs to knuckle down, and he can't walk in here like King Dick, and he can't start treating the officers like he's untouchable. He's got to be shown it's not acceptable. I'm going to make Jerome my personal project. I'm going to stick my neck out and keep him in the kitchen. <laughs> I'll be works out for you. I'll do. <laughs> Come back in his kitchen. <laughs> Mr Cole, he thinks it's a big privilege, but if we don't, give these guys a chance and tolerate that for a certain amount of time in order to get through this. This system's never going to change, not in this prison, not in any prison, so it's just... Oh, it's fucking annoying. I mean, it really is annoying. What do they say? You are making it hard. They want you off the course. And I don't want you off the course. We can't go back on that wing and act like King Dick. Just, just keep your mouth shut. I tried to ignore them, but they, I, boom, when it's time to bang up, they won't call no one else's name, they'll call mine all the time. Samuel, Samuel, Samuel. But listen to me, you get kicked off this, then where do we go? Don't fight against them, it's the system. Right. OK? Let's go. Nothing else in the others, eh? I've been sticking my neck out for this lot all along, but they keep letting me down. 
So that tarp goes back in there. Yeah? yeah. Where's that tarp? You et it. Honestly, guys, I mean, you, 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 you make it difficult for me. Why did you eat it? All I've got was um, chips for my lunch. Who else has eaten the tarts? You've eaten one as well. Why have you eaten one? So you think stuff in your face is better than selling it and getting money in here to keep you in here? There's enough time to cook another one. I'll cook another one. I'll cook another ten. It's not a problem. It's the first rule of business. Don't eat your profits. I need those orders. You've eaten them. You've... I didn't expect that from you. I didn't expect that from you. The rule I ask you, but don't eat anything. Every step of the way, it keeps flooding back to me. I'm trying to set up a business with a bunch of criminals. OK, get out of here. Make those calls, please. OK, I'll see you in the morning. These guys better not let me down. The baking might be finished, but tomorrow, they've got 300 cakes to ice. Don't kiss me, I don't do mine. Put marry me in case someone wants to propose. I need a bigger cake. Two hours until the opening of the bakery, and my bad boys have got in touch with their feminine side. That's nice. A little love heart out smiles. Yeah. A bit romantic? Um, yeah, to a certain degree, yeah. Uh-huh. But there's always one who has to go too far. Lick me. Who put lick me on a cake? Yeah. You want someone to lick you? <laughs> Jesus Christ almighty. Let's go. Adam, where's uh, Jerome? I think he's been uh, suspended for today. What happened? You got suspended this morning? Yeah. It's China, it's really to me, isn't it? What are the screws saying? Then he's, he's giving all the stuff licking them. What a stupid. Where is he now? In his cell? On a day like today, no one's even bothered to tell me they're keeping Jerome on the wing. I need to know what's happening with my own kitchen workers. So I'm back on A-wing to see senior officer Cole. Mr. Cole, for me, it's getting more and more uh, difficult. This morning we sent him a bakery, and, you know, I've got over a 1,000 items to sell. I walked in this morning and there's, um, there's no Jerome. I can't run a business in there when you guys are just pulling people out and I'm none the wiser. Um, I understand that, but we don't pull them out. They pull themselves out. They pull themselves out by their behaviour, don't they? I've sat down with him. Right. I've explained to him. I've talked to him. I've taken his issues on board. Mm -hmm. I've Having... gone through the system and helped him. So, in a way, you're writing him off? Yes. Sorry. He's rubbed himself off, not me. But I... I'm going to fight for it because I can't see that behaviour in the kitchen, which I think is more of a dangerous environment when he's around knives, around other individuals, and the discipline when he toes the line, he actually he knuckles down. That's mm. what you don't see, and that's my frustration. But now I'm a man down, a busy day, and... OK. But as far as A-Wing's concerned, he yeah. stays on basic. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. That's where it's so wrong, because, no, he's on basic, he's out of the course, and he shouldn't be on there in the first place. Well, how are you ever going to change these young guys' mindset? How are you ever going to get into them to... He's young enough to be taught. That's the frustrating thing. It's not Lawrence Gibbons. You know, it's, he's 22, literally. So frustrating. So frustrating. Nice, nice. Today, we start selling on the Great British High Street for the first time. But there's yet another hurdle before I can deliver all this stuff to my pop up bakery. So later on, we've got to get an x ray. What do you mean, x ray? Get an x ray of tart. Well, what happens if we've lost a nut or a bolt and it's fallen in one of these? Jesus. And can we just forget about that for now, or do we have to go? No, no, no. We don't. No. We don't. We're doing it properly, aren't we? Yeah, I know, but there's no nuts and bolts here. Yeah. At the end of the day, we're in one of Her Majesty's prisons. We have systems that we have to go by. No matter who it's for, we do not change the system for anybody else. Uh, Darrell, is that trolley nearby? Just come in, Gordon. Thank you. Pizza boxes. So all the fucking work has gone in. So it's time to make my escape. Aided and abetted by prison head chef 
my accomplice, Daryl Hatfield. That'd be brilliant. This is crazy, you know that? This is absolutely ludicrous. Check there's no bolts and nuts and guns and Daryl. Them till last. Show some flexibility. Going to the supermarket is bad enough, but fuck me, this is ridiculous. This takes the biscuit. And if every single cake and tart has to be x-rayed, I'm going through two. <laughs> Morning. Two more doors to go till we're out. Man, the logistics, the logistics, bloody hell. There's times like this, you really do know you're in a prison, you know that? About time, Dino. Dino, come through, reverse up, please. Oh, oh Jesus Christ almighty. Come on, Dean. Come on, come on, get out of there. Honestly. Are we going in there? I'll see you later. Yeah, I'll see you later. Searching us. It's the system board. Give me two seconds. Daryl. Hello. <laughs> Bye, Gordon. Um, it's been x-rayed, sir. Yeah, man. Daryl! I can get him to explain, sir. With my shop opening in half an hour, it'd be quicker to tunnel our way out. What a fucking palaver. Chances of getting 5,000 bread rolls or cheap tarts out there a day. I mean, it's crazy. <laughs> Jesus. It's amazing how good the food looks outside the prison. I mean, it's extraordinary. Listen, we may be in a pop-up, but yeah, I mean, I'm, uh, I'm hoping this stuff goes. Look at it. Hello. Hello. Welcome. What can I, what can I get you? Amazing um, lemon curd chicken um, tarts, actually yeah. made by the local Bricks prison. And I hear that you're working with my son. Your son? Yes, Jerome Samuels. I'm his mother. My God, <laughs> uh, what a boy! When he focuses, he puts his head down and he he gets stuck in. But from little, he's always he's always like cooking in the kitchen. Oh really? Yeah, I just think he's just mixed with the wrong company. Right. And that's why he's where, he's where he is. But you know. Yeah. Um, I walked in this morning, uh, bad news, he's been suspended. Now, say what not... for? It was some, some, some verbal abuse giving a... a... See, see, for me, officers well, give as good, as good as they get. I know that for a fact. I know, I know. <laughs> but I suppose it. what I don't want to do is break that pattern. He's in the course. You know, he's focusing. Yeah. When was the last time you went to see him? Um, that's something I don't really do. Do you not think he needs to see you? Well, he speaks to me all the time. He can write to me. But it's not somewhere that I would like to be on a regular basis. No, it's not for me. Yeah. This is Samuels. Thank you for coming. I appreciate it. Any messages for him? I mean, I'm going to kick his ass when I see him tonight. <laughs> you no, turned no. the eyes and he, he, needs to he needs to ship himself up, get himself together. Yeah. Tell him that I said No, I will that. tell him. I will tell him. Two of these. I was worried that people wouldn't want to eat prison-made food, but the bad boy's bakery name seems to be pulling in the punters. No, no, no. They're very creative. They are very creative, aren't they? And how does it make you feel they're made by prisoners local? No, that's a cool one. That's all you right. You like the idea? Yeah, that's cool. It doesn't put you off? No, not at all. No. Good. Uh, 20 quid worth of uh, your staff, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. It can only be a good thing to stop them or try and give them some chance of employment. I know people that are in prison and stuff, and I think it's, you know, life's a learning curve. Um, and if they can go in there and educate themselves and learn new skills, then why not? Smells are delicious. Little treacle tarts are delicious. Lemon curd at the bottom. <laughs> I was expecting more, more negativity. It's just fine off the shelf. I mean, really good. But positive feedback. Hello. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Nice to I'm see you. Paul Wyatt's mum. Paul Wyatt's mum, nice <laughs> yeah. to see you. Um, thanks for coming. Like any addict's mum, Christine Wyatt uh, has felt helpless watching her son Paul ruin his life through heroin. Pleased. Do you think he's had enough? I'm not sure. No? I've had enough. You've had enough, yeah. <laughs> um, I but yeah, um, I hope so. I hope yeah. it's, yeah. Maybe something like this might just bring out. Mm -hmm. yeah, I have a, a little brother uh, in a similar position. Uh, who's younger than me, and uh, I see the work that my mum does in terms of trying to keep him on that now. Mm. At the end of the day, she's got to put her hands up and say, we can't do any more. 
Yeah. He's focused now. Yeah, he's very he's focused. Very focused. Yeah. Hopefully, that'll be what he finds to yeah. keep him on the straight and narrow. Yeah. Any message for him? Tell him I love him. Tell him you love him. <laughs> I will do that with pleasure. Bye. It's a good turnout from the prisoner's mums, and it looks like Anthony Kelly's call home to his girlfriend Tara has paid off. Yeah. Is, is this his little lady? Yeah, this is Shane. Shane. This is my youngest son, John. Oh, you look like your dad. How do we stop dad from talking? <laughs> Any ideas? No? Mate, which one would you like? This one here? Certainly. There you go, mate. A handshake. It's a proper man's handshake, you know that. <laughs> Message for Dad. What should I tell him? Quick. Tell him, tell him you love him. <laughs> Happy Valentine's Day. Thank you, bud. Good to see you. Take care. Thank you. That's when it hits home. When you see uh, an 11 year old kid like that. Do you know what I mean? This one here. That was personally made by Anthony Kelly. It's one of his. The shop's got another three hours trading, but I need to get back and let my kitchen brigade know that all their hard work has paid off. Bad boy bakery. Bad boys of Brixton. Bad boys of Brixton, yeah. Thank you, miss. By the time I get back, the wings are locked down. Do you mind have a quick catch up with the boys? Do you mind? Thank you. Hello, guys. How are you doing? How are you? It's going. Listen, they flew off the shelves. Oh, yeah. really? Even the large tarts were going as well, like 10 quid each. Yeah. Well done. Yeah. Everyone who came in there, I said, how does that yeah. make you feel yeah. that this yeah. was made by prisoners? I said, do you know what? We are so glad they're doing something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are yeah, so yeah. glad oh, they're not good. sat there. On the yeah. yeah, on the last, do nothing. Yeah, yeah. We made over three hundred pounds. Wow. Yeah, lovely. In ten four ten hours, weeks. that's profit. Five yeah. grand a week, ten grand. Lovely, lovely. lovely. That's okay. good news. That's good news. So, a message from Josh. Thank you very much. Come here. Me. Happy Valentine. <laughs> that's what he said. Uh, you got a diamond there. You know that. Mm. Oh, no. Yeah, solid. Like a good lad. Thank yeah. you. God bless you, mate. Take care, big man. Stop. Take care. See you later. Get some rest. Without projects like this, we're just locking people up. They are just people at the end of the day, albeit that they've uh, committed crime and, and they're now in prison, but they are still human beings with feelings as well. We've got to try and make a difference. After today, I can see my bakery's got a real future here. But for one of my team, it's the end. Jerome Samuel's behaviour has finally seen him kicked out of my brigade. So frustrating. You know, I had him on that line, that straight now. Yes, it wasn't for months, years, but he found something. He got that little glimmer of, bang, I want that. I know he's not an angel, we know that, but is it right? Throw him back in the cell and forget about him? No, it's not. Uh, right, how are you? I'm all right, I'm all right. What's, what's going on? What's going on? You tell me what's going on. You've been pulled off the course. It's out of my bloody hands. It's okay. No, it's not it okay. Happen. It's not okay. I knew it was going to happen. Come on, Jerome. You're out in two months' time. Yeah. What's going to happen? I don't know. I can't actually tell you. That's why I jumped on this course to change my life. Obviously, I'm off the course now, so shh, what's the point? I know, but I give up easy in it. I ain't got time for wasting wasting time. I don't want to sit on the street broke. I don't, don't do the broke game. How is this going to stop if you revert back into that mode, they give up on you, and you don't hold on to that chance? How is this ever going to change? I don't know. I can't actually tell you, innit? I've tried. I've, I've, I've gone down the legit road. I've been there. It don't work. If I, walk into my, if I walk into your business and I give you a disclosure statement with my history, you are not going to hire me. And don't stand here and lie to me in my face, because that would just be an insult. You would never hire me with my record. Never. But it, 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 it takes time to change that. You can change it. There's only so much you can do, don't you? Don't give up. Right. Fuck. Pause. Bye, John. Pause. Pause! Welcome to you. Let's get the members in.